Uh, it's time to call upon the second speaker for this session. It's uh, Mr. Shankhu Mukherjee. Shankhu has been with HSBC since 2005, September, and was one of the founding members of the Glo Global Analytics Center, GAC. He established the marketing and CRM analytics competency at GAC and has been instrumental in expanding the engagement of GAC across different markets and brands of the HSBC group. Shonko is also managed business analytics for the retail banking branch network of HSBC's US business, being based out of Buffalo, New York. He currently heads the data and analytics vertical of HSBC's retail banking and wealth management businesses with teams across Kolkata, Bangalore, and Guangzhou. Uh, before joining HSBC in September 2005, Shankar worked with GE Capital International Services in Bangalore. He received his master's degree in economics from Delhi School of Economics. His topic today is advent of AI and machine learning in the banking world, how it's bringing a paradigm shift in customer experience. So, thank you, Rajiv. So, uh, the topic for today is uh, advent of uh, ML and AI in the banking landscape. But um, what I'll do is I'll start with a photo. Let's see, do we recognize, does anybody recognize who this gentleman is? He's got nothing to do with machine learning. So it's, it's not so popular uh, a photo, but I'll, I'll just uh, probably talk about it. This is the photo of the very celebrated German scientist and chemist, Otto Hahn, who was instrumental in discovering nuclear fission. He, he was the first person who basically figured out that massive amounts of nuclear energy can be generated by the collision of subatomic particles. Now, let me show you another picture. Any idea, anybody, what this is? This is a nuclear reactor, OK? Now, it's a nuclear reactor. Now, the first nuclear reactor was developed in 1942 by Enrico Fermi and his team in Chicago, which was called the Chicago Pile Project. That was a very important event, and the reason for that event was it allowed the commercial consumption of nuclear energy. So why am I talking about these things? I've been asked to talk about ML and AI. And the reason I'm talking about these things is basically to establish the fact that an idea to go from conception or concept to consumption, there needs to be certain enablers, or there needs to be certain triggers. The nuclear reactor was the enabler for nuclear energy. So ML and AI, although these are concepts which are now getting used, they have been around for many, many years in academics. They have been, there's a lot of research that has been done. There have been sectors like retail, telecom, e-commerce that have adopted these quite a few years back. Banking, however, has been a relatively late entry into the sphere. So, so therefore, what was the reason or what was the enabler for banking to adopt these technologies? What was the epicenter of this paradigm shift as far as banking was concerned? To understand that, let's first take a look at what banking was or how banking looked like a decade ago, right? So all of these should look very familiar to everybody. Right? So what were the touch points for banking a decade ago? It was your brick and mortar branches, it was your ATMs, it was your contact centers. These were the avenues or the channels which were used to interact with your customers. Now fast forward to today, what does it look like? Those touch points that I talked about, they do still exist, but they're rapidly getting, getting superseded, if I might use that word, by digital touch points. So that is bringing in a very big change. Now, over the last five years, we have witnessed dramatic changes in the customer behavior and preference patterns. Bulk of transactions today go through the digital channels. And the mobile phone is 
becoming the single most important device which is revolutionizing the way we live in today's world. Also, what is happening is with the millennials coming into the consumer landscape, the preferred way of banking is changing. So payment apps, payment gateways, mobile apps, these are getting becoming the preferred way of doing things. So therefore, there's a very clear mindset shift in the consumers. And in order to be able to cater to that changing mindset, in order to be able to cater to the preferred way of doing things, banking also has to adapt. And that is where newer technology, ML, AI, is getting adopted in the banking world to cater to these preferred ways of banking. So digital is really at the center of all this paradigm shift. So today's world is a very digital world. We are living in a digital world, and it is very fast and rapidly changing. Now, digital being at the epicenter has its cascading effects, right? So what are those cascading effects? If I look at this, there are four different cascading effects that I can readily see. So first of all is the evolving customer expectation. So I talked about this to a certain extent when I said there's a consumer mindset shift. But consumers now expect more personalized treatment. Consumers want more timely treatments, right? So therefore, you have to change the pattern in which you approach your customers and interact with your customers. Simultaneously, data is growing at an exponential level. And that has been one of the major areas or one of the major enablers for ML and AI to come into the BFSI space. And as, as data is growing exponentially, it is becoming more and more difficult for our legacy storage, computation, and tooling strategies to keep pace. So they are falling short in able, being able to address these, and therefore the new requirement for newer things. And most importantly, the consumption or the front-end solutions are changing. In the last five years, if you look at it, the way the front-end solutions have been developed in banking have changed in terms of how they've been reaching out to customers. And that has, again, been one of the areas of how ML and AI is getting used. So I will deal a bit more de in, in a bit more detail in each of these areas. So let's talk about the evolving customer experience. Okay, so what is really important in banking, right? So there, there could be many things that are important, but at the heart of it all is really the customer, customer, the customer's expectations and the customer's requirements and how you set the customer's uh, expectations and manage the customer experience. And this becomes the real winning strategy. If you get your customer experience right, this becomes the winning strategy in a very competitive marketplace. Customers want more personalized uh, requirements, have more personalized requirements, and therefore um, require more personal treatments. So all of you will, will, will or all of you uh, get these calls on a regular basis, I'm sure, from financial companies where they call you for some offers at some points of time saying, sir, ma'am, do you need this or need that? When you keep the phone down, you actually feel, what the hell, do I need this offer? It's most of the time that happens. But there are instances when you get a call from your bank or any other financial institution, and after you've kept the phone down, you really feel, wow, they really know me. They really know my preference, and they really know what I'm looking for. The reason why that customer wow happens or the customer delight happens is because that, that communication was personally relevant and that communication was timely. So therefore, it is important to have your communication very personally relevant and timely. But for that, it is equally important to know your customers well at each of their life stages. Be it your application stage, acquisition, onboarding, where you portfolio manage your customers, or be it your retention or reactivation stages. At each stage, it is important to know your customers well. And your data allows you to know your customers well. Today's customers, if you think of it, and I talked about, they, they want personalized treatments, but they want to be heard also. 
They want quicker turnarounds. They want, seem to, they want to seamlessly manage their financial needs. And they want to make the most out of their mobile and digital journeys. Now, therefore, if you have to cater to all of those things, then the way you've done things traditionally does not really cater. And therefore, your solutions have to be very different in the way you treat your customers. And that is where ML and AI is big, making a very big difference. Now, let me move to the next quadrant that I talked about, and that was data. Right? As I, as I said, data is growing exponentially. So I, I, I just have two minutes left, so I'll probably be a bit quick. So data is growing exponentially, and in order to be able to tackle this data, there, there, are, there are different algorithms that, that you require, and this data is also supplemented today by a lot of different unstructured data. If you think of it, you had your legacy systems, but now you're getting much more digital data. You're getting chat and call data. You're getting audio voice data. You're getting data from surveys, feedbacks, and images. Add to that data from your social media, uh, feeds like Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And in order to be able to do that, your as I said before, your storage, computation, et cetera, is falling short. So you need much more higher compute and much, more, uh, much better tooling strategies. And that is the reason why cloud strategies are becoming so important, why more of your open source tools like, uh, like R, Python, TensorFlow, et cetera, are getting used because they can handle plethora of algorithms. Now, let me quickly talk about some use cases that that we have. So in different aspects of banking, there are different use cases that are being used. So analytics and banking has traditionally uh, revolved around uh, prediction. So a lot of that can be readily moved to this ML AI framework. But things like digital, uh, uh, digital prospect targeting, real-time screening of fraud risk, or customer differentiation or credit profile differentiation, so these are very good techniques that you can use at the acquisition stage. The customer management can be enhanced by recommender engines. They can be enhanced by data mining of unstructured data, chats, transcripts. You can use natural language processing. You can use deep learning to get much more insights into your customers. Fraud risk, uh, fraud risk financial crime compliance are areas where you can use things like network science. Uh, to, to actually figure out uh, suspicious transaction trails. And the other thing that is becoming very important is conversational banking, particularly in customer service. And that is one area where chatbots are getting adopted as very good AI solutions in the market today. So a lot of robots are coming into branches, and you see these are very cool uh, applications of, MI, uh, of ML. And the final area that I really want to touch upon is banking operations. And that is getting much more streamlined by the use of things like optimal, optical character recognition or routing of calls, complaints, chats for the right resolutions using reinforcement learning and the likes of it. So, so those are some of the usage of uh, ML. Now, I just want to wrap up with a quick trivia. This is, does anybody know what this is? This is the Google trend, uh, a Google search trend for machine learning. And if you look at the, the, this has grown really exponentially. So any, any technology that grows at this level, there is a need for governance. And banking is a very regulated industry and for the right reasons. So therefore, it is important to have an ethical usage of, M, of ML and a transparency and explainability of solutions so that the governance framework is put on a very solid footing. This will then enhance our abilities to achieve the overriding objectives of maintaining data privacy and eliminating unconscious bias. So with that, I know I'm short of time. I will wrap this up. The possibilities are really, really immense. And there's, there's a lot that can really be done in this sphere. And I'm really, I'll be here uh, during the entire day Happy to chat up with anybody if there's interest in this aspect. But thank you. Thank you, Data Science Foundation, for 
giving me the opportunity to speak here, and thank you. You can present your questions to him. We've got a couple of minutes. Yeah, hi. Uh, it was wonderful uh, topic you have covered. Just a couple of interference, like a couple of days, two days back, uh, Ministry of Finance uh, guided all the banks to disclose data regarding MSME to third party vendors. Just to protect uh, ring fence till the, uh, uh, for disclosing the NPA for all this uh, SME, MSME uh, to support till uh, March 2020. So uh, this is like a, coming from a government, coming from a ministry, uh, this is contradictory to the revolution which is happening. How do you interpret this? So I, 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 I'm not very close to this subject, honestly. So uh, I am more in the global part, so not very close to this subject. So I will not make an official comment about this, but I could, I could probably offline take those views. It's relating to data privacy. Basically. Yes, like so, so data one, privacy uh, definitely is at the top of our, uh, our agenda. But uh, I will not officially comment on this one. I'm not the authorized spokesperson. For okay, this. I understand. Thank you. Thank Sorry you. about that. Thanks for the session. It was great. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, how much now banks are ready to move their data into the cloud uh, domain? And uh, I know looking at the security and the confidentiality of the data. And second question is like, you know, what is that you guys are doing on the fraud detection? Uh, uh, when it comes to machine learning. Now, how much of uh, the technology being used now? Because I see in a lot of uh, places, it's still very traditional statistical models. Yeah. So how much actually we are using the AI there? Yeah, OK. So uh, so quickly, uh, on the cloud strategy, I think different companies or organizations at different levels of maturity. But uh, the, the, uh, the understood path is moving towards a cloud strategy because if you've got to do these things, you need high compute power. And obviously, banks do take more time because they have to be very sure about uh, data privacy norms to be able to move those things. In terms of fraud, there are particular areas that we are uh, dealing with those things. And uh, I'm happy to talk to you about some of them. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to cover it within this time, but offline, we can definitely. Absolutely. Thank things. you so much. Hi. Hi, um, that you know, uh, Hong Kong Bank in China, they are uh, adopting AI in having customized chatbot, so which is cognitive chatbot. I just wanted to know how open is uh, the India market to such AI technology or the stakeholders in terms of you know adopting uh, data from let's say social media or things like that. So, so chatbots for customer interaction, this, this is being built in most companies, if you look at it at this point of time. And most, most of it is, is more internal in nature, rather than bringing in data from, from the outside, from social media. But at this point of time, if you see, most chatbots are about guiding customers through internal procedures. So if you, as a customer, come to a bank, then that chatbot can help you navigate the bank and whatever queries you have, rather than going to an agent. So if you don't need to go to an agent, but a cognitive search mechanism allows you to interact on your own. I think that's all the time we have for questions right now. If, if you have any other questions, you can always take it offline. I now request uh, Mr. Joyne Mitro to come up on stage and felicitate Mr. Shankar Mukherjee.